free stuff isn't always great. Often, it isn't. So in this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'm gonna test three free digital painting software to see if they could actually be used as replacements for professional tools like Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, basically to see if they're any good. And then I'll rank them from the worst one to the best one. Let's check them out. Oh, uh, class is burning. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. And pay the class fee of either one like or one thumb to help me feed my family this week. The first software we're checking out is called Photopea. Photo Pho uh, and it's a weird one compared to the other two in a sense that it's a browser based app. There's an option to download it locally, which is what I did and what I have here. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's got this sidebar for ads here, but uh, that's not really a problem. You know, check this out. Oop. Gone. Magic. <laughs> now, to make the list, it was very important that these painting software were not only free, but not abandoned by their creators. It was also important that they worked on Windows and Mac, at least, support pen pressure, kind of right out of the box, and could handle Photoshop file formats because, well, Photoshop is still the industry standard when it comes to digital art. So now, Photopea doesn't just handle Photoshop files, it's basically a Photoshop clone. I mean, look at this. Everything in here feels the same, looks the same. The default shortcuts are all the same. It's crazy. And it's free. What? I was also surprised to see that it has the same gradient map tool as in Photoshop, which is fantastic. That's a really rare tool to come by. Other than Photoshop, only Clip Studio Paint does it decently. And Photopea here, of course. And that's a big one. If you're a subscriber, you know how much I love coloring using gradient map adjustment layers just for how quick and flexible it is. So on the surface, this feels like it shouldn't be free. It's got everything a good painting software should have. Blend modes, brush modes, all the usual layer options, image adjustments, filters. It even has the same Photoshop layer styles and even all the adjustment layers, not just the gradient maps. It's pretty crazy that you don't find this in most other paid painting software, but here it is and this is free. It also has more advanced layer features like clipping masks. My main criticism for it is mostly directed at the brushes. It's not bad. I can import my custom Photoshop brushes super easily, which is great, but most of them just don't work quite like in Photoshop since, well, they don't have as robust of a brush engine. Still, there's enough options to play with here to be able to create decent brushes. And you can use all of these brushes as smudge brushes, like in Photoshop too, and that's very nice. Another small complaint maybe is that I can't edit my hotkeys. They might be like the Photoshop defaults, but my setup is a little bit different, so that's kind of annoying. Also, there's a bit of a paywall for this one, but I figured that wasn't as big of a deal. It really only limits the number of history states, like how many undos you can do. I think it's 30 max by default and double that at most for the paid version, I think. It's not much either way. I use a thousand in Photoshop, but I think Photop is limited just because it's a browser app. And of course, paying for this would get rid of the ads, but they're not bothering me. Overall, this is a great Photoshop alternative. It's like Photoshop Lite. I would definitely recommend this one for students on my art school program, for example. I use Photoshop as my main tool, but students in our private school Discord often ask for a cheaper alternative to avoid Photoshop's annoying subscription model. Clip Studio Paint is usually my go-to recommendation since it's you know almost the same, yet much cheaper, but it's not free. If you're out of money, this is free and features all of the tools that I use myself in the program, so it would be really hard to get lost. And talking about that, we just reached 19,000 enrolled students in the art school program, an absolutely crazy number. And to celebrate the milestone, you can get the program at a big discount with the link in the description below. The price did go up a bit this month, but the discount should help offset some of that. There's no better way to get your art journey started or take your art to the next level if you're already experienced. It's the most popular art program in the world for a reason. Join us. What are you waiting for? All right, the next software is Krita, a better known free option. I have a lot of good things to say about it. This too is a full feature digital painting software that's very customizable. So coming from Photoshop, I can set all of my hotkeys to be identical and I feel at home right away. In that sense, it's a little better than Photopea, where the hotkeys were locked. This is a regular install, unlike Photopea, you know, it's not a browser app. 
and it's available on most platforms. It's another one that seems to take a lot of inspiration from Photoshop, so a lot of the tools look similar, behave similarly. It's also got most of the basic tools that I tend to use when I paint, different layer styles so that you can use inner glow, drop shadow, outer glow, etc. for your layers. Something that Clip Studio Paint and Procreate, for example, don't even have. I just don't understand why these two free painting apps have it and they don't. Anyways, we also get the typical image adjustments like color balance, levels, and things like that, and up to 8,000 undos like Photoshop. What it doesn't have, however, are adjustment layers like Photoshop and Photopea, meaning there's no way to color your drawings using gradient maps. And that's a big yikes for me. It also doesn't have clipping masks per se, but you can still get similar results using groups and the inherit alpha layer feature. I would say it's not maybe as user-friendly as a good old clip mask but it works the brush engine here is also much more solid than photopea and there's a nice default selection of brushes to use but importing your own from photoshop faces the same issues they, they just don't work it's best to just create your own right here in krita or you know download krita specific brushes from other artists my custom photoshop brushes that you can get for free with the link in the video description by the way well they don't work at all for this so but some of them do work in photopea the more simple ones now as a concept artist slash illustrator, I think it's important to mention the set of tools that I'm most interested in might not be the same as an animator, for example, or a comic artist. Just keep that in mind. The next one then is a clone of another free software called Fire Alpaca. They look nearly identical, but it's my understanding that Medibang has a few more options when it comes to brushes. Otherwise, you can probably consider both. Medibang Paint Pro is just the name of the desktop version of the app. There's nothing pro about it per se. It's available on most platforms as well, and it's 100% free like the others. All the versions are the same. In terms of the painting features though, like layer management, brush customization, this one is probably the weakest of the bunch, but not by much. Specifically, there are no layer styles and no adjustment layers. There are still clipping masks and alpha lock features and all that basic stuff is there at least. But you know, not having layer styles and adjustment layers is a big deal for me because I use those a lot in my regular workflow in Photoshop and it's often part of the techniques that I teach here on YouTube and in my art program. But maybe you don't care? Now, the brushes available here are okay, but there's not a whole lot that you can do to modify them. Kind of like in Photopea. All three software allow you to create your own brushes at least, but uh, in this one I wasn't able to import my Photoshop brushes at all. So I've just been using the default ones and modifying them to my liking. Medibang Paint Pro also allows you to modify all keyboard shortcuts and there's also a screen recording feature built in so that if you want to, you know, post time lapse of your art, you, well, you can, that's pretty nice. You also get basically infinite undos as much as your computer memory will allow. I just had one problem with the pen pressure when I opened it for the first time. It wouldn't draw a full stroke, like there was a bit of a lag picking up the brush stroke so that the start of it wouldn't show. And well, the solution to that, if that's happening to you as well, was simply to go into the pen and windows ink settings and to make sure that this here is selected. After that, it worked properly. Now, no idea what it's like on a Mac. You're on your own there. So overall, Medibang can definitely get the job done. If I were stuck with this as my only available option, like I wouldn't be too sad, even if it's missing a couple of key features that I love to use. What it does, it does well at least. Now, when it comes to the ranking of these three free painting apps, and again, keep in mind that this is heavily biased towards my workflow as an illustrator slash concept artist, but I'll have Medibang Paint Pro as the third place, Krita in second. And despite the limited brush options and the tiny undo history, I'll have to go with Photopea in first, simply because of the gradient map feature, AKA the adjustments layer and the layer styles that almost perfectly mimic those of Photoshop. Those are features that have always scratched my head as to why they're not available in like Clip Studio Paint or Procreate. And well, Photopea's got them and it's free. Now I will say though, it was really close between Krita and Photopea. I just feel right at home in Photopea and that's a big plus for me. Now, it's my understanding that all of these apps are still being updated by their creators. So any of them would be a good recommendation, I think, depending on what your priorities are. There are other free painting software out there, but I found them to be way too lacking in comparison or just simply abandoned, so they didn't make the cut. If you know of any that I should have definitely mentioned though, any that you know could go toe to toe with these three, let me know in the comments. I'll definitely check them out. Anyways, that's it. That's gonna be it for this week's class. I'll see you next week.